Good morning. I am here to explain how a criminal case works its way through our court system up to the Superior Court, which is the court for which I am a candidate on the ballot on November 3rd. I am Paula Ott. I am a judge in the Court of Common Pleas of Chester County, Pennsylvania. I would like to give you an overview of the three areas that I will discuss in my brief lecture. Case from arrest to trial, from through trial to sentencing, and then the classification of the various crimes that can be committed. Of course you know that a case starts when the police arrest someone. You have the right to challenge that initial arrest in front of a magisterial district judge by deciding whether the police have shown that there is probable cause to show you have committed the crime for which they have arrested you. If the police are able to show that, the case moves forward to the Court of Common Pleas, which is the kind of court that sits in the courthouse you see here in Clarion County. Those cases, before they are put on a judge's, what we call docket, you have the right to challenge your arrest through what's called a motion to suppress, and the right to challenge other evidence that might be there in the case against you. That would be whether there was probable cause to arrest you, whether there was any problem with the lineup of the victim identifying you, and whether there is any problem with the integrity of the evidence itself that was collected. We call that the chain of custody of the evidence. Assuming that all motions for suppress ha suppression have been decided against you, you then go to a jury trial. You and your attorney and the prosecutor pick the jury. We pick 12 jurors who must unanimously decide your guilt or innocence. The crimes which can be committed for which you would have jury trials are misdemeanors, felonies, homicide cases, um, but then there is another classification of trials for which you do not have a jury trial, and that's called a summary trial. That is underage drinking, as a prime example, as well as violations of the motor vehicle code. So returning to the case that is in front of a jury, the jury will hear the case as much as you might see on TV, although I will tell you that jury cases are not nearly as exciting uh, and much more tedious than those that you might see on Law and Order or some other crime show on TV. Assuming that the jury comes back with a guilty verdict, that means that the judge must sentence you to whatever the sentence would be for the crime that you have been convicted of. The ranges of sentences involve probation, sentence to a county jail, which would be a sentence of under five years, or a sentence to a state prison, which would be a sentence for more than five years. In deciding what your sentence should be, the judge looks at the crime that you have committed, how severe it is, as well as whether you have a prior criminal record. Then the judge also has to take into account whether there is any sort of mandatory minimum sentence for your crime, which could be if you used a weapon, if the victim was young or elderly, um, the amount of drugs that you had, if you had possession with intent to deliver, which is a felony as opposed to just possession of drugs, which would be a misdemeanor. Let me go over an example of a crime that many of us are familiar with, driving under the influence. That crime does carry a mandatory sentence so that whether you're convicted of that crime in Clarion County or Chester County, your sentence is going to be the same throughout the state of Pennsylvania. So in addition to possible loss of license, you would have a sentence based on what the BAC level is for that, that you blew or your blood level tested, and whether you have con been convicted of that crime in the past. From there, after you have been sentenced, you would have the opportunity through your attorney to appeal your sentence to the Superior Court. The Superior Court must take your appeal and decide whether the trial judge was correct in their rulings of law and whether the jury was correct in arriving at a verdict. If you had been involved in a homicide which carried a death penalty, then that case would automatically go to the Supreme Court and bypass the jury. Now in a death penalty case, there are two phases. There is the conviction of guilt, which is beyond a reasonable doubt standard, which is the same for all cases that we've been talking about. And then the, the jury, the same jury, 
must decide whether the death penalty should be imposed. So, that case goes automatically to the Supreme Court because of the seriousness of that crime and, of course, the risk that you could have a death penalty imposed. I hope that you have enjoyed this lecture and will take the time to listen to the other lectures in this series which cover the different aspects of the Superior Court and the kinds of cases that they hear. Thank you.